Last week, we made some graveyard fences with some pieces from MiniatureCrush.com and Noble Knight Games. This week, we're going to make a graveyard gate to go along with them. Fully modular, the top pieces are interchangeable, the gate swings open, the chain comes apart, and more. That's this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're going to be working on a cemetery gate to complement the cemetery fences that we made last week. I wanted to make this piece as modular as I could, like I do most of my builds, where these little pieces on the top come off, the gate opens, the chain comes apart, and more. So it's a really fun build. It goes along, again, with those cemetery uh, fences really nice. And the cool thing about it is, since it's pretty modular, you can pull these pieces off and it can be used as just a regular cemetery gate. It can be used as a haunted gate if you put some of those toppers on here from my Sinister Chapel video. Or it could be used as an entrance to a manor, maybe. So the codes from last week still apply, so we'll get to those at the end of the video. So right now, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. Okay, so if you download the plans to help you out, this is what they're going to look like. And basically what we're doing is we're cutting out a rectangular shape two of them, one for each side of the cemetery gate. And I'm using up a bunch of still leftover foam from my Colosseum build. I have a feeling I'm going to be using this up for quite some time. But again, just cutting out this uh, rectangular shape for each side of the gate. Now once we have those cut out, we want to cut out basically like a little footer for the column. And you want to cut four of these out to the exact same size. So we're going to have one for the bottom and one for the top on each side. All right, now for the archway over the top of the gate. You can, you know, if you don't download the plans, you can have any type of arch you want over the top. This one here is set so that it rests flush on each side of the column. And I'm using the Proxon on a very low heat to just freehand cut this. And if you don't have a Proxon, you can use an Alpha Knife. And if you want to use a guide, like cutting this stencil out on a piece of chipboard first and gluing it to the XPS, that's okay. Just make sure you're not pushing hard on the wire because you will get an angled cut underneath you know, that jig that you've cut out. Now we're gonna cut this little archway out right here. And you can see this three lines, like a little rainbow. And what we're gonna do is cut all those out one at a time this shows you the width that you're gonna have because all those arches are basically going to tear inwards towards the center of this arch just to give it some nice depth and dimension. So you can see on the left, I've already cut that one to width and now we're going to cut one more line off on that arch, as you can see here, trace this over onto that and we're gonna rinse and repeat this until we've gone through all three of these arches. And again, I'm freehanding this. I wouldn't really recommend, you know, doing a uh, chipboard stencil because it's such a small piece. Just turn the heat down low and, uh, and make your cut. All right, now this is a piece of balsa wood. I'll have a link to all the items I've used in the description below if you want to pick these up. And basically, we're going to be cutting this and gluing our fence into this piece right here so that it will rotate and actually work and move on us. So now, this fence, again, is from miniaturecrush.com. And now we're going to use an entire section of this fence from the top all the way to the bottom. And just cut it out the way you see me do it right here. Basically, you want the right side of this fence to look exactly like the left side so that we can glue those three pieces that are sticking out on the left there into that piece of balsa wood that we've just cut. Now an easy way to mark where we need to drill our holes in the balsa wood because it's very soft is just roll it like I am right now and pressing it into the fence. That will leave three marks that you'll be able to see in the wood. Then just grab a little pin vise like this and you can drill into that balsa wood. Just take your time. 
If you do it too hard or too fast, you'll chip it. Again, the wood is very soft. Now once we have the location marked out on the balsa wood and those holes drilled, then we can cut the gate um, where we want to to make it actually uh, open up. Now I'm using Gorilla Super Glue here. And the nice thing about the Gorilla Super Glue is that it works in both plastic and wood. So I applied a little bit to the balsa wood, a little bit to the plastic fence, and now we're just gonna set it in place. Now on that little magnet there, you've seen me use these in a lot of my videos. I've just applied a little bit of accelerant on there and now I'm putting some super glue on the bottom of this balsa wood. That accelerant is gonna make the super glue cure very fast to the bottom of this uh, dowel stick right here. Now I'm just taking a little bit of super glue and I'm basically painting it over the wood and the magnet to really help lock and hold this in place. Now we can set that aside, let that finish curing, grab some uh, aluminum foil, add some texture to all our stonework. And then using the plans, we can get the exact location of where we're gonna put these magnets in the base. Now again, we're doing these to the bottom and to the top of the pillar. This gives you an idea how strong the magnets are. Um, don't do this uh, right next to the other magnet, but don't stress out. Use a scalpel if you have one or an X-Acto and it slides right between the magnets. You can peel it right off. But I wanted to leave that in there to show you just how strong these magnets are. Okay, now we're taking the top portion here. And again, this piece that I'm putting on has a magnet. You can see it's stuck to the top part of that gate as I want to put the um, foam on. And just make sure that the gap and spacing around the top of that column matches the bottom so that the uh, fences will be vertical, obviously, when they're in place. Now we can go and glue our tier structure, if you want to call it that, into place over the arch. You can see how these step inward and added really nice, cool depth and feature to the arch. Now this is just for some uh, design over the archway. Cut this piece out with an X-Acto. I traced it onto the arch, and then I'm going to use the X-Acto to trace a square out around that. And these are just some like relief cuts so that when I'm pulling the foam away from the piece that I want to be left in there, I'm not removing an enormous chunk and accidentally maybe ripping the piece out that I don't want. So again, this clay sculpting tool, if you've been following my channel, I use it probably in close to every one of my videos. And just use this to peel away the excess XPS foam that you don't want. And as you can see, because we made a nice straight cut with the X-Acto around the edge, we've got a nice straight line. And the foam that's left behind facing outward or up right now looks really cool like a really rustic stone look all right now we just take a little bit of uh, hot glue obviously and we can put these uh, right in place and use the fence itself to make sure that your distance obviously is correct because that's the ultimate limiting factor here you want to make sure that the top arch sits nice but also the gate obviously is very important now, this section right here, this is just to be able to mark out the section of three separate locations going up the side of the archway to add some embellishments. If you don't have these little pegs that I'm about to use, you can um, you know, make something out of foam, you can put rhinestones on here, uh, you can use beads, anything you want that you got kicking around in your inventory. These though, they came from a board game. All right, now we're measuring out um, a section here for the top three sections over the archway. We're gonna glue these on, add magnets so that we can have some cool details sitting on top of this archway. So obviously only two of these need to have that little cut, slanted cut that I just made. Obviously, as you can see here, to fit up along the arch, the top one, leave that square. 
Now we're just making a hole here for a couple more magnets. And the cool thing here, if you haven't seen my Sinister Chapel Holy uh, Temple video, check that one out. It's got a lot of really cool toppers that you could take from that video and use in this one that you can put to make this, you know, like a scary uh, graveyard or, you know, an archway maybe into a manor or something like that. Now we want to basically age the stone. I'm just cutting the edges up. I'm adding some holes to the face of the stone, chipping out some edges. And um, yeah, using a, a toothbrush here is a good way to get rid of these little tiny pieces because there's gonna be a lot of these things all over the place by the time you're done. Okay, we are finally on to the Mod Podge section of the build. Slap some of this all over the whole thing. Mod Podge, black paint, and a thin coat, and you're good to go. These are some inch and a half, I believe, uh, washers. I used three per base, so you need six of them for the build. I cut those out with an X-Acto, placed them in there, glued them in, add a little bit of hot glue to the bottom, press them into some parchment paper, and now you get a nice, sturdy base. Now you're probably like, Tabletop Witchcraft, you didn't show me how to paint this thing. <laughs> um, that's because I didn't want to have this video be super long. This exact painting technique can be found in the first part of the series, the Cemetery Fence video. Uh, this is exactly how I painted this. So when you're done, I'll put a link up above, come back to here, click on the link, and you can see how I painted this up. Now we're gonna take some Vallejo Primer and we're gonna prime the balsa wood. And if this gets onto the plastic for obviously the fence, there's nothing wrong with that, that's okay. And we're going to paint this fence up exactly the same way we painted the fence up in the video that I had just mentioned. Now I'm taking a mixture of a couple of Vallejo pigments, some burnt umber and some black pigment and I just mixed those together to make it a little bit darker because the burnt umber is a, was a little too bright for me. And any place that dirt, debris would build up over time, that's where I'm placing it. Once I have it where I want it, a little bit of pigment fixer on top of the thickest portion is where I'm placing that to hold it in place. The rest of the model got a spray of rubbing alcohol to lock that pigment in place. Now, these crows are absolutely awesome. They're from Noble Knight Games. There'll be a link in the description below to them. Again, the video before this will show you how to paint those up. Now, I want to add some grass into those cracks, some leaves into some areas where things might build up. This is really a really fun part of the build. Go out in nature, take a walk, see where things you know build up um, just naturally if you're having a problem with this. It really will help you out in the long run. And I wanted to show this because it's little things like this that really stand out when the build is done. One leaf in that arch really looked cool. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, do little things here or there to have people actually have to hunt for and look on your builds. It's, it adds a nice little feature. Now that moss there, we placed that underneath the archway, any place where, you know, moss would be growing. And now we're sticking a few crows around the build just for some really cool embellishments. One major thing you wanna keep in mind when you're doing this, make sure the tails or the wings don't get in the way of whatever you're gonna be placing on top of this because that obviously would be a problem. Okay, now you might have seen these before. These are little tiny holders for birthday candles. My daughter just had a birthday, had some of these kicking around. So basically cut it like that, put a magnet in the bottom, and then form some aluminum foil just like that to stick right in the top. What we're gonna be doing it's making some old flower pots that are gonna sit on the top of this archway. Pin vise to hollow it out, mix up some green stuff here, wrap it real thin around the uh, base of the frame uh, that we already had. You can see how I put a link up above to the rat video, how when I make things out of clay, I like to have something substantial underneath that I can build to so the whole thing isn't made out of green stuff. And using these clay sculpting tools, we can work the green stuff to wrap that up and, and then we can paint it up.
Now also, when working on this, you see how I got this nice and solid on the glass? That's exactly how we want it, because in 24 hours, we can use uh, an X-Acto here or a straight edge razor to cut it out. All right, now we're gonna make some um, plates here that some chain is gonna hang to. So put some putty or some green stuff on the glass and make a square out of it. And I left it bunched up a little bit along the sides because I thought that actually looked really cool. And I'm just put a little split ring right in the center and a little green stuff right over that to make it look like something, you know, that was holding this, uh, this ring in place. And I put a few uh, little holes around it to look like rivet holes. Now I'm making a topper for the gate. I'm using these plastic arrow picks and basically just making a cross out of it, using some super glue to hold it in place. Don't worry about that little mess. We're gonna cover it up in green stuff. Now this base right here, I made it out of aluminum foil, covered it in green stuff. I don't recommend doing that. This piece was actually big enough that you could have made this out of XPS foam and then glued the cross into that. So if you're gonna build this, I highly recommend just making this piece out of foam. And then in the very bottom of it, uh, hot glue a magnet into it. But this is the basic shape that you're looking for. And you can see I just used a little bit of green stuff to cover up the glue. Okay, now we're gonna measure out a little bit of chain. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the project here, and I thought it'd be cool to have a chain going across the front of this gate. So measure that to length, um, add a little bit of uh, super glue to it, a little tiny magnet, and let that cure. I sprayed it with a little bit of accelerant, that way I can keep moving. This chain, you're gonna paint it up exactly the same way as you painted the wrought iron fence and the gate. Okay, now I'm making a little sign for the fence or the gate and just cut it out like this and I'm using the um, Alpha here to really age and uh, splinter the wood. Now the paint scheme here is I painted it in black as a base, then I used some territorial beige, real thin, then some light gray, and now I'm applying a black wash. Once that dries, I do a nice light coat of the gray over this again, and it gives it a really nice aged wood look. You can see this technique done in my, uh, my fence video. I'll put a link to that above um, where I made that out of all XPS foam. And I'm just writing the words keep out to make it, you know, inviting for the players to go into. <laughs> all right, so here, you can see how easy it is to peel everything off that we made with that straight edge razor. And now these uh, rings here, I painted these up the same as I did the fence, obviously. Hot glue them right into place. Now the chain I had cut obviously in the middle, applying a little bit of super glue to hold it in place. And then once that sets, super glue turns a little white once it cures. Just rub a little bit of the typhus corrosion over it when you're done and you'll be all set. There's a little bit of accelerant with a little bit of super glue on the back of that sign pressed in place, and the sign's good to go. I thought that was a cool little touch. I tried to attach that to the chain, but it kept spinning on me, so I just threw it on the door. All right, now this is some sheet moss. I put a bunch of uh, super glue inside the flower pot, and um, yeah, that's pretty simple. And here it is in action. The doors move, you can take them on and off if you want. These uh, flower pots, which I think look totally awesome, look nice there. Again, um, you can add anything you want though for a topper here. And you can see just how easy it is to attach the uh, chain together with those tiny little magnets.
So this brings to a close my short little two-part series on graveyard fences and gates. I'm going to add these to my graveyard playlist down below. So if you want to check out all that content to make the ultimate graveyard for your tabletop games, you'll know just where to find it. If you want to show some support for the channel, consider picking up these plans, grabbing some merchandise, or heading on over to Patreon and checking out one of the tiers that I got over there. Also, if you want to grab some of the parts or pieces needed to complete these builds, the wrought iron fence portion of this can be found at miniaturecrush.com. The discount code over there is TABLETOPWC, and that's good for 20% off your first order, and that expires October 15th of this year. If you want to grab the crows, those can be found over at Noble Knight Games. The discount code there is NKGRAVEN, all caps, and that'll get you 5 bucks off your first order of $25 or more, and that's good until September 14th. Alright, until next time, I'll see you around.